Welcome back to Living Local. A Rock Island native was a book. Sorry, I messed that up. <laughs> Welcome back to Living Local. Lane Evans, a Rock Island native, was a beloved U.S. congressman for 24 years, representing the 17th District of Illinois. One local man set out on a journey to share the life of this political legend in his new book titled Guts, The Lane Evans Story. He is joining me in studio. We welcome Devin Hansen. He is the author of Guts, The Lane Evans Story. Devin, thanks so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. So, Devin, I understand you're a Rock Island native. What's your mm -hmm. experience as a writer? Well, um, I first started writing when I was a teenager, um, and I uh, won a few awards at the Mississippi Valley Writers Conference, now called the uh, David R. Collins Writing Conference. He was a teacher of mine, and uh, so he kind of pushed me into writing, and so I studied at Illinois State uh, University, um, and it was cool because David Foster Wallace was a uh, professor there at the time, so I talked to him about writing, and um, then after I graduated, I worked at the River Cities Reader for a little bit as a journalist. Um, I was a sports writer at the uh, Dispatch Argus for a while, and then um, I was doing fiction on the side and whatnot, and um, then, uh, so it's always been a passion of mine. Yeah, so it sounds like you've explored a variety of different writing genres. What mm -hmm. inspired you to write this book on Lane Evans? Well, um, you know, I've always admired Lane. Uh, I first met him in 83 when I was, what, eight or nine years old, and um, so I followed his career. Um, I'm kind of a political junkie. And so I followed his career for many decades, and uh, you know he was just a celebrity around town, and um, I admired so much about him that I felt his story. Um, we all know his story pretty much here in the Quad Cities, but I felt he did so much for the nation that um, it'd be good to bring his story to the rest of the country. And Devin, why do you think that Lane was so beloved by our community? Well, um, most importantly, he was always working for everybody. It didn't matter if you were Republican, Independent, Democrat. Um, he set up a really good constituent services uh, department that would handle complaints uh, for veterans. Maybe they weren't getting their benefits. Uh, maybe a little old lady wasn't getting her social security check. So they'd call the constituent services and um, he had a great staff and they would um, you know, cut through all the red tape and get what they needed uh, for the constituent. So he, he really endeared himself to a lot of people. And before he was in Congress, he did a lot of pro bono work for um, victims of domestic violence, uh, people getting evicted. You know, we had a lot of downturn at that time in the early 80s. So he was helping a lot of people with foreclosures, et cetera. And um, he was doing it pretty much just out of the goodness of his heart. So, um, you know, he was just a, a, a great man. And I think a, a lot of people admired him and want to know his story. Yeah, it sounds like a very generous man. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of research and analysis did you have to go to to create this story? I'm sure a lot. Yeah, yeah, it was it was hard too. Um, I first started, I you know, doing internet research, but at the time there wasn't a lot of uh, newspapers digitized yet. So um, I went to Western Illinois University, and they had all his um, old speeches and letters and memos, et cetera, just in uh, Rubbermaid totes. So wow. I had to go through just tons of these. Uh, for several days, and then I had to go to the newspapers, and again, like I said, they weren't digitized yet, so I had to go through all these old folders of news clippings, just piles and piles of news clippings, so <laughs> I just read a lot and took notes on all that, so that took uh, four years almost of just a research alone, and then plus the interviews, he had so many um, you know, workers over 24 years, so I tried to interview as many as possible. So people that knew him, worked closely with him, interviewing them, going mm -hmm. through all the archives yeah. of information. <laughs> yeah. uh, what topics does the book explore? Well, um, obviously it explores his career, of mm -hmm. course. Um, he did a lot, uh, he passed a lot of bills that he really didn't get credit for. Um, the one that he did get credit for that was his largest was the Agent Orange Act of 91, mm. which helped Vietnam veterans. But there were a lot of bills that, you know, he pushed and um, sponsored that he didn't get credit for at the in, in the end. Uh, the book also explores uh, Parkinson's. It, the book's a dual narrative. Um, like I said, half is his career. The other half is me. I, I visited him each week for several years um, when he was in nursing homes. So it's kind of a chronicle of what Parkinson's, um, how Parkinson's patients have to uh, 
you know, the physical therapy they have to go through, the medications they have to take, the painful tremors they have. Um, so it kind of explores a lot of the, so that. So you visited him every week in the nursing home for some time? Yes, for, for several years. What was that experience like? Um, you know, it, it, it was bittersweet. There were some days when he was, um, you know, vocal and aware and, and feeling good, and we'd have some really good chats, and then other days I'd go there and he'd just be, you know, really having a bad day, and he'd just be falling asleep, mm -hmm. and I'd just sit there with him for a while just to give him some company. Wow. Um, what do you hope that readers will take away from this book? Because I know it explores a lot of different things, and I also understand that even though you have so much adoration and respect for this man, it, it also explores some other topics, like some scandals mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. Yeah, it, it's not a fan letter. You know, I, I wrote two versions of this book. I, I discarded the first one because it was too much of a love letter to Lane. <laughs> so I, um, I revisited it um, with an editor, and you know, it, it explores it objectively, any scandals are just explored objectively. I try not to go one way or the other. Um, but I, I hope people uh, come away with a sense of that, you know, a politician that sticks by his principles um, can win in a swing district like this, that, um, you know, principles matter more to voters than just putting your finger to the wind and following polls. He, um, he always voted his conscience. And, um, you know, that endeared a lot of people to him, even Republicans, no matter where you were, they'd say, you know, I may not agree with his politics, but you knew where he stood, and he was a man that was truthful and honest. It sounds like a book that's full of themes that many people can relate to or appreciate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I hope so. I well, Bevan, so. thank you so much for being here. We <laughs> sure you. appreciate your thank time. You. you guys, if you'd like some more information, go to laneevansstory.com. We'll also have the details posted on ourquadcities.com. More Living Local returns after the break. Stay with us.